Thank you, Charlie. Just a reminder that we would like to get your visions, comments, and vote forms back so we can know what we did right and did wrong this year and know who we'd like to see next year here. Uh, remember, you need to use a microphone to ask a question. Uh, we'll have two people in the aisles uh, running up and down with the microphone, so if you want to ask a question, get our attention, and we'll be glad to um, bring it over to you. And if you're too shy to ask the question, there are cards in the back of the room. Fill it out with your question and who the question is for. Hand it to one of the people with the microphones, and they'll be glad to ask it for you as long as there's time. And now please welcome from Babylon 5, Claudia Christian. And Richard Biggs. Every time. Every time. Oh, hello. Okay. Shall we sit? Hi. <laughs> okay. So, what is that noise? Turn that thing off. Jesus. We've got enough competition here. Huh. I think we should just start with questions since we have absolutely nothing new to say. So let's start with some. Try to make them the uh, questions that we haven't asked. Yeah, I, I'll give a prize to the person who asked the most original question. Oh. <laughs> Within the boundaries of children in the room, of course. <laughs> this question is for Claudia. Um, there's a scene in Divided Loyalties that looks like it was cut off when we were watching it on TV. Did you actually kiss Andrea Thompson and they cut it on, left it on the cutting room floor? Uh, you mean on screen or off screen did I kiss her? <laughs> well, was it filmed? Was it filmed? No, it wasn't filmed. <laughs> no, we never, uh, we never went that far because after all, there's a lot of kids that watch the show. But, you know, we practiced uh, just in case they asked us to. <laughs> Let's rehearse that one more time. Thanks. I have a, I have a question for Richard. Um, aside from obvious similarities, like they're both act, acting jobs, are there any similarities between acting on a soap and acting on Babylon 5? Uh, no, not too many. Uh, on, on a soap, you're, 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 it's a lot quicker pace. On uh, Babylon 5, we do maybe two or three pages, uh, four pages a day. On a soap, you do 100 pages a day. So it's just like, hurry, 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 hurry. My question is for Claudia. Where are you? Right ah, hi. <laughs> hi. I was wondering if you could translate the French on the first song of your CD. <laughs> French. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I will tell you that sous moi means, um, well, never mind. Uh, Touche moi le bas means touch me there. Uh, that's about as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> because God knows there are children in the room. But let's just say that it's, um, I'm directing someone to do things <laughs> to me. How's that? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> God, I got out of that one pretty well, didn't I? <laughs> Hi, I got a question for Claudia. Yes. Uh, we know that Susan is not a morning person from the, from the few scenes we've seen. How about you? Uh, I think Rick and I had this conversation this morning because he's like, hey, okay, great, let's go, cartoons on, mad, 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 you know, and uh, when I wake up, I'm in a very good mood, but I'm very quiet, because as you know, the rest of the day, I'm not, so <laughs> I think that in the morning, I, I'm this different person, I like classical music, the newspaper, my pot of tea, I like to be very quiet, and you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> I hate noise in the morning, but, I, but I'm in a good mood. Even in the trailer, in the makeup trailer, at six in the morning, for some reason, I'm, I'm a very morning person. I'm up, and I'm energetic, and, and then I kind of slide down about three, I'm like, uh, and then Claudia's the other way around. She's like, in the morning, she's like, real quiet. Like, if she's the only one in the makeup room, there's like that nice, quiet music, and the makeup artists are really quiet, and Claudia's reading her paper, and I come in, hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> and Claudia looks <laughs> over, and she's like, would you shut up? Yeah, uh, I can't say, I mean, Bruce and, and, between Bruce and Jerry in the morning, it's like they come in, God damn it, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh and the goddamn radio, and the goddamn guy's got this goddamn point of view, and I'm like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> it's... Bach, okay, shut up. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're just like, God, it's horrible. No, I can't, I, I, Susan is, is a, 
Ivanova is a, is a really bad morning person, but uh, I'm, I'm in a perfectly good mood. I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's all. I have a question for Claudia. I'm over here. Yes. It's uh, from the first season. It's, it's, you're at the breakfast table and Jerry Doyle and Michael Hare, you know, Garibaldi and Sinclair, they've, they do the, the thing with the food, you know, and you're half asleep. Was that ad-libbed or was it totally scripted because it was funniest? Very, very funny. And the way you played that scene was the wonderful. scrambled egg thing? No, that's the, not the, the... We do a lot of breakfast. <laughs> the one was the scrambled egg. This was the one where they... I fell into the food or something? Or, or yeah, you fell asleep into the asleep. food and, and then they removed it and then you woke up and, and they, they said, said, oh, you're late, you know? Right. And, and, and then you, you're off screen, you hear this scream saying, Garibaldi, right, you're right. going to die. Right, or exactly. Like that. Well... <laughs> I'm always threatening somebody with, with death. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, nobody's still alive. Anyone's still alive. Um, actually, it was totally scripted, and I had a really hard time, because uh, I, I don't have a hard time crying. I don't have a time, hard time with anger. I don't have a, but the one thing I have a hard time with is surprise. That's the only thing in acting, because, you know, it's like, it, it just always seems phony to me, you know, like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> fear, you know, you, you always picture someone going, you know, and it just, it, you know, so waking up, you know, f feigning sleep was one thing, but then feigning that you're late. It, I don't know, it just seemed awkward, but I appreciate the fact that you liked it. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't the script. We're not allowed to add or detract anything from the script. Joe would kill us. We would be drawn, quartered, and burnt, basically. Um, in fact, there are times when I take out contractions, and we used to have the script supervisor, you know, hit and she'd go, um, Claudia, it's cannot, not can't. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I say, I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not gonna say, I cannot do it. I can't do it, I can't do it. I cannot, cannot. I mean, I'm like, come on, man. So, and she was real, real nitpicky because, Haley. yeah. <laughs> Haley. Haley'd every now and then. Yeah. Oh, she's, by the way, for your knowledge, she's the one that's, the white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers <laughs> only. <laughs> you know the computer voice on our show that sounds like a, a what the Excuse hell is that? Excuse me. Would you stand up for a minute? You scared the hell out of me. It's Pippi. <laughs> you look like me in the morning. <laughs> I didn't know you were a cross-dresser. <laughs> you know, you know somebody for four years and boom, you get a surprise. It's amazing. Hi, I got a question for you. You guys have been so energetic and so perky since you got here. We take what? speed. <laughs> You've just answered my question. I was going to ask, what are you on and can we have some? <laughs> Please. We're on jet lag and caffeine, honey. <laughs> so, I think we're both. Yeah, right over there, the guy with that with nice hat. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend who uh, collects birthdays, so uh, I'm uh, here to have collect mine. yours. <laughs> Uh, just birthday. the month and the day would be fine. I'm not asking the year. Mira wouldn't tell me or the year last year anyway. <laughs> August 10th, 1965. I'm 31. March 18th, 1960. I'm 36. Thank you. And proud of it, baby. Damn it. I wouldn't want to be in my 20s again if you paid me all the money. In the they world. were the worst years, oh my weren't they? God. You oh, awkward. They were painful. You don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no work. Well, you no, work. You I were work. working. I was you. working. I was, I was unemployed. I was a busboy, a uh, waiter, ditch digger, I all was around. Going through a divorce. <laughs> Was, uh, no, we don't want to go back there. No, no, no. <laughs> 30s are much better. Yeah, definitely. Who's next? Um, Claudia, I had a question for you. Over here. Hello. Hi. Um, you mentioned that you have a German mother, and I, we've seen enough to know that you're very fluent, if, if not completely fluent in French. I was wondering how many other languages you knew and how you thought that affected your performances by being so international, and how much foreign theater have you done? I am so suave bola, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I, I lived in Italy for three months, so my Italian is my best second language. My, that's really my second language. My French isn't that great. I have uh, a good ear for languages. My grandfather spoke over 30 languages. Yeah. Um, he was French and Alsatian. My, my father's Irish, so <laughs> I don't speak Gaelic, though. Um, it, it helps a lot. I've had to do accents, and, and I haven't, uh, you know, I did a lot of Shakespeare, so I did the Elizabethan accent and so forth. And, but. Um, I, I, I can do accents. I, in Colombo, I did sort of a Euro accent. You know, he, he, it was so funny. Peter Falk was like, ah, make it more Italian. You know, then the next day is, could you put a little French in there? And I'm like, where am I from? <laughs> and he said, well, you're Swiss on all the borders. I said, 
I should have asked, you know. So one day it was German, the next day it was Italian. You watch the performance, you're going, this girl is weird. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I had a, an a, a amalgamation. <laughs> yes, um, but yes, did I answer the question? Good. <laughs> I think I did. Okay, we got one. <laughs> yeah? Who, I'm sorry, and you are? <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> I talk, have an, talk. I have an off-the-wall question. Uh, has, uh, has anyone kidded Jerry Doyle about how much he looks like Bruce Willis? <laughs> no, well, that's the first time we've ever heard that. <laughs> I, can you even believe that? <laughs> never dawned on me. Yeah, uh, yes. And as a matter of fact, um, Jerry likes to tell the story that he was in Moonlighting, which he wasn't. <laughs> He says, oh, yeah, I stood in for Bruce Willis. Yeah, right. Anyway. Uh, He's got a lot of Bruce Willis stories. He was stopped by the cops once because they thought he was Bruce Willis, and then they realized who he was. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. Oh, no, you're not Bruce Willis. You're Jerry Doyle on Bedlam yeah, right. 5. Right. This, this coming from a guy who has the dance theater of Harlem on his resume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the old black troupe of the dance theater of Harlem. And, and Jerry Doyle. Jerry Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> In big letters, Jerry Doyle and the <laughs> dance group of Harlem. He is so full of it, let me tell you that. I, if I could find what? one real thing on his resume, I would give him 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. What's the best way to break Jerry up when you're doing, if you want to? To break him up? Break well, him up? You make, make him laugh? Yeah. You know, just to make a mistake makes him laugh. If any of us screw up, no, the way to piss him off, though, is just start spouting on liberal viewpoints, you know. God, I love Clinton. Ah, he is my hero. I'm so glad. Actually, I always I come in and say, well, my guy won. <laughs> and that's enough to get him every time. He's like, he hates, he's such a staunch Republican. All right, next question. Enough about Doyle. Question, <clears throat> question for Richard. I just loved the, Where are you? Oh, here, yeah. right. I just loved the sight gag with the glove in uh, Falling Towards Apotheosis. And I was, I was just wondering um, if, um, if Joe scripted that or if the director... Um, what, what, what was it again? I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> where, uh, where you say to Garibaldi, there's just one more thing I have to do, and Garibaldi says, oh, no, not that. Uh, you've um, seen that already? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That oh, was, it was on that last was night? Thursday. Thursday yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was scripted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I didn't make that up. <laughs> okay. I'm sure he would have liked to. <laughs> and thank you for pronouncing that. I never knew how to say the episode of Papiosis. Is that what it is? I <laughs> never knew either. Actually. A pack of theory. No. <laughs> Going through gethestamine to hunt the herd. I mean, that was my favorite. <laughs> I had the hardest time pronouncing it. <laughs> yeah, that's, all, that's all Joe. Uh, Joe was scripted that. Uh, He's but the see, sick guy. Yeah, you know... <laughs> Joe, Joe, you know those things, those, those gloves are so hard to put on. So did OJ have a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then they're so easy to take off, and so Joe gives me one line to put them on, and then he wants me to take them off slowly with five or six lines. And I'm like, Joe, they're so easy to take off, and they're so hard to put on, let's switch it around. You know, but, uh, no. Called acting. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Go ahead, man. Go now ahead. he said he was his good twin brother today. Uh, this is for Richard. Yeah. <laughs> what serious. a surprise! <laughs> okay. Uh, serious question now. All right. <laughs> Molto All right. serioso. <laughs> Your best friend is accused of murder. Would you drive the getaway car for him? If, if my best friend was a murderer. It was accused of murder, yeah. Okay. And, and he Would got in the car the and he Walker? said, let's get out of here. <laughs> what? No, I would no. not. I would not. If, 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 if he did kill the person and we both knew that, is that what you're asking? Just accused. Yeah, I would drive them. Yeah. Would you drive the yeah, yeah. Ford Bronco? Okay. Yeah, if he was just accused. Ford Bronco. Uh, let's be a little. And if your name was Al, and um, and there was some blood in the car, but you didn't really know, and you had a passport and a wig. Just and hypothetical. I know, but, just hypothetically. Hypothetical. Hypothetically. hypothetically. Yeah, I, I'd drive them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh God, get another person out of that question, damn. 
<laughs> this is a recurring theme, the OJ convention. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I did. <laughs> yes? Yeah. I was oh. just wondering, uh, what was the strangest thing each one of you did as a kid? <laughs> It's so good. Uh, it's worth money. Money. Okay, say it. Come on. No, you're first. Uh, <laughs> strangest thing I ever did was when I was a kid? Margaret Wagner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, strangest thing I ever did when I was a kid. I, oh, I put a, you know those um, flowers, pussy willows? I liked it because it was really soft, and I was Stuff feeling it, I, feeling it around the corners of my nostril. And I, my brother slapped me on the back, and it went all the way up and almost to my brain. I had to have it removed. <laughs> uh, I think I think that's pretty weird. And uh, I, I don't know, pussy willows up the nose. I, I, not something I do as an adult, so perhaps that counts. I'm much more interested in what Richard has to say, anyway. <laughs> No, I can't tell you this. I can't tell you. No, I tell. All right, this. Um, I, no, I don't know. I have no idea what I did. Come on. So I judge. I, I chickened out. I'm sorry. I, just, I can't tell you. No, there are cameras here. You know, there. Just. Will you just, tell me later? Yeah, I'll tell you okay. later. But. Okay. Next question. Yeah, I had one for Richard. In the episode where you faced yourself while you were dying, yeah. did you find it difficult to talk to yourself? And, and did you have a double? Talk to myself all the time, actually. <laughs> no, uh, we, I had a double. He was a, uh, he was a good actor, and so it was just like doing a scene with, a, with another actor. And then, we, then just switched the roles, and then so I just learned both characters' lines, and then... What, was the other actor knew his lines and was doing it with you? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it was very easy. You know, it was very easy. That's cool. Actually, they cloned him for the scene. <laughs> I have a question for Claudia. Yes. You said you're very, very good with languages. Uh, do mm. you ever have any ideas about uh, Ivanova speaking Yiddish at some point? <laughs> Actually, um, they want. I was going to do the. Uh, I was going to do the, um, the. The the morning prayer when my father died. Right. I was going to do that in uh, Hebrew, but. Well, you, know, you can learn to, to curse really well in Yiddish, and it sounds good, and you can say it on TV. Yeah, and, and, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, apparently they just thought that that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. But I, I was willing to do it because, you know, Yiddish is very much like uh, German. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was, would have been... Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, could, I could have done it, but... Okay. Go ahead. No. Um, what the hey? I'm, I'm going, apparently. Um, I have just seen this season and first season. So I was wondering, is it like a running gag about Ivanova never actually sleeping? Because I always seem to see her awake, yeah. drinking, trying to s <laughs> not slide down something. I <laughs> yeah, vodka and uh, no sleep seems to be recurring. In breakfast foods and nightgowns seem to be um, uh, a recurring theme in my life is Ivanova. Um, I think it's because she's... Uh, she, she exists on very little sleep, so I think that's probably, it, it's a very strong characteristic of her character. It, it, of course, during the war, I don't think any of us got any sleep, and he didn't sleep for, what, four months? He was doing stims. We saw Captain you know. Skippy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's kind of we like We saw Captain really Skippy sleep. Uh, yeah. All right, you must understand, we refer to Sheridan as Captain Skippy. Captain Skippy. And <laughs> I'm sure I don't he'll know how appreciate it happened, that. But <laughs> well, I remember We've seen him sleep. I used to hear that, what was the nickname they had for, well, that was Michael O'Hare? Commander Yon. <laughs> I mean, you guys come up with. <laughs> I hate to see what Ivanova is. <laughs> Bitch on wheels. <laughs> uh, pull up the butt. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Sandy. Hi. Hi. This has been my wonderful attaché for the weekend. She's really a most amazing woman. And and by the way, I hear that she knows everybody. So this is Sandy. Nice round of applause. Thank you very much, Sandy. You're great. Hi. Oh God, now I do. Okay, the question I have is actually for both of you. Rega 
what would be the ultimate role that you would want to do, regardless of gender, whatever? If you could have any role in any literature, movie, film, what would you want to do? God. <laughs> no, 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 no. What would you do? Um, I'd probably want to play, uh, like, Superman. <laughs> Superman, uh, yeah. I would probably, I'd like to do a, a, a period. I'd, I would have liked to play Orlando, actually, and that, that would have been cool. That was, it go through all those centuries and those costumes and the fabulous, ah, oh, man, that, that would have been my dream role. One of, the, one of the things that makes B5 so special is the continuous story arc. At what point in the making of the show did each of you realize that it wasn't hype and you really were doing a, um, what Joe's called a novel for television? At what point did we realize that? It, it? That it was really a continuous evolving well, story and not a lot of stuff. I think that was, that was, that was in, ingrained in our head from the very beginning. Very beginning. And, yeah, I mean, he, he, he made no ifs, ands, or buts about the fact that it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so I think that um, it was interesting. It's interesting for me to get the scripts because we don't know what's going to happen and, and things become uncovered about your character and the storyline slowly, uh, it, it, you know, they, it all ties together. There's all these wonderful little threads. And, but I always knew that it had a beginning, a middle, and an end because if he says there's, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. He's not the kind of guy who's like, <gasps> just kidding. We got picked up for another four years. So it's a nine-year saga, you know. That's, that's not... <laughs> That's not, that's not Joe. No, uh, yeah, at the very beginning, I think, but then there was a point where I realized that it was going to, that it might go five years. I mean, for the first, first two years, we were like, all right, it's a five-year story, but come on, it's not really going to go five years. This will go one or two years, and then, you know, we'll go on to something else. And then about after the second year, when Bruce came on, it was like, oh, well, maybe they're serious. Maybe this is going to go five years. Um, yes. Um, I haven't been to all your panels. I don't know if this has been asked. I'm from Memphis, and I've heard that other markets are having this problem right now where a B5 is being pushed out of prime time on the affiliates, and they're showing it like at 1.30 in the morning <laughs> on Saturday. You're on lucky they get it at 4 in uh, <laughs> Georgia. I don't know uh, if the cast and, and uh, Mr. Strzeginski is aware of this, or is there anything that the production or Joe is trying to do to, you know, get this sorted out? I know that we've had some local letter writing campaigns and such. There's, there's not much we can do unless the, the stations, because it's a syndicated program, the stations themselves decide when they're going to air Babylon 5. And unless those stations get a, a tremendous amount of letters from people, they are the one. Warner Brothers has nothing to do with that. We have nothing to do with that. Joe has nothing to do with it. It's, it takes the fans to write into their local station that airs Babylon 5 saying, this is, you know, you can't show it at 1.30 in the morning. This is ridiculous. And I think that if those, if those letter campaigns continue and grow, then, then the local stations, they have changed in some markets. They've gone from 4 in the morning to 8, 8 p.m. Or nine. They've they've changed because of the response from the public. Matter of fact, Lori Denver Denver had it on at like two in the morning, and then they started this big, huge letter campaign, and now it's on like at six or seven p.m. or at four in the afternoon on Saturday. Yeah, it works. See? Yeah. Just don't be quiet. You know, get on the internet, and write those letters, yeah, and bombard the, the stations. I mean, you're guys, you're the guys who keep us on the Just air. Just burn down your local TV station. <laughs> You didn't hear that here, folks. <laughs> Next thing in the news, Babylon 5 actors indicted for arson. <laughs> Hard copy has the story. <laughs> Picture of Rick going... <laughs> and me going... <laughs> I didn't do it. All right. And then, and then there's a little clip of, of him from one of these videotapes going, just burn down your local <laughs> thing. <laughs> and smash cut to the fire, you know. Smash cut to him, burn down the local thing. <laughs> I think this could work. Anyway, who's next? Who's next? Go ahead. Claudia, Rick, good yes. morning. Hi. I'd like to know what you find in your lives is a real challenge for you. <laughs> My mind is so sick. <laughs> no way am I saying that. Go ahead. What's really challenging for you, Mr. Biggs? Challenging. 
right now at, the, at this time in my life, uh, trying to balance my life, my uh, life with my, my personal life and my career, and trying to trying to balance it out to where uh, I'm not so much of a workaholic and everything is my career. I'm trying, trying to balance it out. That's a challenge. My challenge is saving money. It's impossible for me. Well, I have a story. I... No. <laughs> I go over to Claudia's house one day, all right? So, uh, Mortgage. She, she, says, she says, come over about once. So I'm there at one, and no one is there, so I'm waiting for her. So I'm waiting at her house, and all of a sudden she pulls up in her little car, and she's pulling out these groceries. And as she's pulling them out, I notice that on the, ba on the brown paper bag is like, what is that place? That Chalet you Gourmet. Which is like the most expensive place you can buy food in Los Angeles. And as she's taking these expensive bags out, she's like, you know, I've got to save money. I've got to, I've got to save money. Uh, Claudia, you might try Safeway. <laughs> I don't watch TV, I don't go to movies, I buy books, and I make dinner parties. I mean, is that too much to ask for that I live slightly, I mean, you know, I don't drink shitty tea, I'm sorry, you know, I drink good tea. I mean, you know, that's, I have to admit there are a couple of things I spend money on, books, and, uh, you know, I like to entertain, and good wine. I'm not, I, you know, life is too short to drink wine out of a box. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, it's just, <laughs> anything that comes in over a two-liter bottle and with a screw top, I'm like, no way. <laughs> you know, if it's named after, like, <laughs> Thunderbird, after the names of cards, cars, I'm like, no way. You know, so, yeah, a ripple. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, uh, I've seen you and J. Michael, or done an uh, interview on AOL. I was uh, on the internet. What do you think of, of the... Uh, internet and chat rooms and all of that and all this now how all the fans are now getting online and connected are you, you talking to me yes uh, oh, <laughs> I didn't know. sorry no that's all right um yeah joe and, and john copeland and i um i don't type very quickly nor do i know how to really use a computer so john the pr producer we occasionally do these chat rooms they last about an hour and it's it's great because uh you know he calls me names and i call him the bard you know and um and it's, it's, it's very enjoyable. The fans get to ask questions and we get to sort of, he's in one room and I'm in the other room and I'm, you know, yelling out my answers while the producer types them in feverishly. And I think it's terrific. The only downfall is, is that um, I'm having a hard time identifying myself to people so they don't believe me when I go into the Babylon 5 chat rooms. I've been kicked out four times. <laughs> I was, I was at this um, place called Cyber Java, which is a, is, is a cafe, and I had the Channel 10 News or whatever, Channel 11 News that shows us, right? They're sitting there with a news crew, and I'm going, this is great, I'll get in the Babylon 5 chat room, it'll be on the 9 o'clock news, right before t or after our show, the 10 o'clock news. And the guy's going, this is perfect, he gets us into the chat room, he goes, okay, Claudia, go for it. I said, hi, this is Claudia Christian, I play Ivanova. I'm like, boom, I get kicked out. <laughs> Let me try this again. Hi, this really is me. You know, and they go, we don't like imposters, get out. <laughs> so I am thinking of like everything I can possibly, how can I prove it? Oh God, you know. Finally, I, I got so fed up. It took about an hour later, I finally said, okay, that's it, I'm calling Joe. I called Joe Straczynski, I said, get on the computer and get in there and tell him that's me. He goes, all right, give him my secret code word. So I get back on there and I give him the secret code word. Then I give him the phone number to Cyber Java Cafe. Finally, one of the guys in the chat room calls the cafe in California. He's like in Minneapolis or something. And, and I pick up the phone and say, hello. And he says, who's this? I say, who the hell do you think it is? It's Ivanova. God damn it. Let me have the goddamn <laughs> And there was, <laughs> there was this silence. And you hear the guy go, uh, uh, it's really her, man. <laughs> You're damn right, it's me. Now get the hell off the computer and get me on there. I was like, it was so funny. The poor guy was like scared. But anyway, from that, from that point on, people have, then I, I got this barrage of letters from people, we're so sorry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so now I think I have a secret code word I can use or something, but um, I just haven't had the time to get on. Hmm. But I enjoy it. I think it's terrific. And I think what Joe is doing is great. You know, spending all that time online, listening to the fans, getting feedback, it's great. Uh, this is for uh, both of you. I hope you make a guest appearance on BFAC. No, just kidding. Uh, all right, the both of you are on a plane, and you're heading towards uh, the Alps Mountains, <laughs> and your plane crashes, and one of you dies, and you have to eat the other for food. Would you do it? 
Are you kidding? Have you seen him? I'd eat him in a second. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, so, so we're starving to death? Is that what we're doing? Richard, I got a lot of meat back here. You go ahead, honey. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd do it. You guys read that book alive? Yeah. Did you see that movie? Yeah. They, wow. they took the thin slices off the buttocks yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why am I reading this? You know? Is my life this ridiculous that I have to read about cannibalism in the Andes? I mean... Anyway, next question, please. On a related, if somewhat tamer note, do you prefer potatoes or stovetop stuffing? You know, this convention's going downhill right now. Potatoes, I don't need anything out of a box. Yeah, potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> Gravity! I, gotta, I, I love these wenches. Work? Gravity! I got a serious question. I hope is for all the fans like to know. If you may have told us this, but we missed it because we were in here yesterday. What's about the renewal for Babylon 5 for season 5? Is there any rumors? You didn't about hear, it? we're canceled. <laughs> You're kidding. Where were you yesterday? In the luncheon for the, uh, you know, I don't know. No, I don't know the internet. <laughs> we're definitely doing a two hour movie of the week for TNT once we wrap this season, and we may do another one after that. We haven't had the final word on that one, but it looks very good. And as far as season. Thank you! Thanks for sharing. And as far as season five goes, um, unless they tell Joe within the next couple of months to wrap up the story this season, then it looks like obviously we'll go another one. So um, just keep watching. <laughs> next time, come to the goddamn talks, all right? <laughs> yes. um, my friend in L.A., this is not my question, she wanted to... <laughs> Honest, seriously. She wanted to know, <laughs> Miss Christian, if the earring that Ivanova wears, if it has any special significance. Um, the earring that I wear is uh, for my brother in real life who died and for my brother on the show who died. That's why I just wear one. It's in memory of both of them. Yes. Would you please tell us about the rubber chicken story? Okay, now I remember it. All right, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so it seems to be that I'm the one that always gets the practical jokes played upon me by the crew, because for some reason I have this high-pitched squealy scream when I am surprised. You wouldn't expect it out of my mouth, but I kind of do this, ah! you know, and it, it, they like it for some reason. Um, <laughs> And I always think that I have a modicum of composure, so I will not be surprised very easily, but of course I'm always the one you know, that, that they get. So there was one time which I thought was very amusing where I'm standing on the observation dome and I'm, you know, and I'm doing something and I'm, we're, things are flying at us and I turn around to tech one and I say, bada, 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 I turn back around and there's the Enterprise. <laughs> going right across the observation dome. I'm like, and, and the grips are all going, <laughs> You know, so they're all doing the Star Trek theme, and I'm looking at this, and it's on a fishing pole. The grip's got it like this. <laughs> and the model is swinging back and forth, so that, of course, you know, got me laughing. I didn't scream. Well, then we're doing another scene. It's always in the observation dome for some reason, and I'm talking to, <laughs> I'm talking to an actor, and, and, and we're filming this. This is not, you know, this is not a rehearsal. This is an actual take. So you don't expect things like this to happen. And I'm talking to him, saying, okay, you've got to go over there and bring the transmission and blah, 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 and all of a sudden this rubber chicken goes, boing! right in front of me and I <laughs> and the stupid thing was they had and it, of course you know they did that so that it will be on the Christmas reel me looking like an idiot for the 25th time and the, the silly thing was about two weeks before that they got me with a snake the same thing only they threw it on me and so I'm in the middle of the scene I'm walking and all of a sudden they're saying I'm on my shoulder I'm like ah! you know. I, they get me every time these guys so those are my uh, those are my little stories from the crew the lovely crew of Babylon 5 Who's next? Yes, I have a question. It's been burning inside of me for years. I'm so, so sorry. Let it out. <laughs> uh, it, it's for both of you. For both of you. I was wondering if you knew uh, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I don't know. I just bite it in half and chew it. Right. I never get there. I don't have the self-control. I, I usually get, you know, like halfway through and then it's gone. It's history. Why are we take... talking about this, anyway? <laughs> They're trying to come up with the weirdest questions so they win a prize. Oh. <laughs> Little do they know the prize is a spanking, but that's okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, 
Next question, please. Okay. Yo, man, chill. Yeah. All right? Okay. Okay. It's a two part question. Who loses their concentration fastest, and who can you not get to lose their concentration ever while you're doing. Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. That answers the first part uh, of the question. No, um, who has the best, who's got the worst concentration? Uh, probably Jason. Jason gets flustered very Jason easily. Jason gets flustered very easy. Mm -hmm. He gets and, nervous very easily. And Andreas, I don't see Andreas getting messed up that much. Bruce, once he gets, once he screws up like two or three times, really, gone. he's gone. He's, he needs to, because then he keeps talking between it. Like, yeah. you know, he'll screw up and he'll go, well, it was actually because I saw somebody in the corner yeah. wearing white. Yeah, and, and there was, was a plane there. There was a plane. It was so distracting. <laughs> and, and did anybody else hear that? Did anybody else hear that? <laughs> you know, and I saw this uh, cup of orange juice that he was lifting up and, and uh, you know, like just... Just do it Calm again. Calm down bro. and do it again. I know, but you know, a lot of actors do that. They screw up and they, they have and to they make have to an excuse. Somebody. You've got to make an excuse immediately. You know, there's a lot of movement going on in my eye line. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that, that's the answer to And you. Mira doesn't mess up that much. Does she? I don't have that many. The, the, only, the only thing she ever some, occasionally has a hard time with pronunciation of something, but then, but then cause she, and she gets angry at herself, yeah. which is ridiculous she because she speaks herself. English so perfectly, you know. But um, she's hard on herself, yeah. Me, I <laughs> screw up so often I forgot. <laughs> no, I, I, it's the only thing that ever gets me is when I have one line in the middle of like four pages. So I'm just like sleeping with my eyes open, and then all of a sudden, this, this is Claudia. <laughs> when we have we have a group shot. Be kind. Claudia comes on the set with a magazine or something, yeah. and she'll have her little script right here in her pocket and the magazine. She'll Yes, Commander. <laughs> hey, you know, I have to say one thing, though. Whenever we have those scenes, people are happy because I'm very quiet. Yeah. I, I bring, like, the Teutonic Wars in, you know, this book, like, five <laughs> inches like big, you know? <laughs> the history of Druze in Rome. And you don't you hear know? a word out I'm of like her a, for, like, four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just, because I love to read. I'm a bookaholic. So I'm reading the book, and then all of a sudden they'll say, okay, uh, we're going to go for a shot, and I'll say, Put the butt book under my butt, and all of a sudden I'm taller. <laughs> and we'll do the scene cut. And right back into her book. <laughs> and, you know, because I've got like one line in the thing, and I know it's after Walter, so once I see Walter's lip stop moving, I go, Yes, sir, I agree with him. <laughs> then, you know, then I space out again. <laughs> this is still a, a pretty uh, homophobic, I'm over here, by the way, hello. Uh, this is still a pretty homophobic and racist society, as much as we'd all like to pretend it's not. Um, it's getting uh, harder and harder for girls to find role models in a way that are strong and effective and professional. Do, uh, uh, Claudia, do you think, would you talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the role model of, of Ivanova being bisexual on the show and yet being effective and professional? All these things, the message seems to be that the only women who are strong and effective and professional are probably bisexual which hooks into the homophobic thing. No, 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 no. Darling, first of all, it was just one night. <laughs> you know... That's uh, what they all say, actually. You know, I mean, it, everybody in their life has had, I don't care what you say, has had some sort of a little weird thing in their life or, you know, or, or just a little transgression or whatever. And I think if she's... That's it, the weirdest <clears throat> thing I've ever done when I was a little... <laughs> You see, you see, we all sort of, I mean, God, I used to make out with my girlfriends when I was a little girl. I mean, God, you know, it's just something, oh my goodness, shock me. <laughs> you know, I mean, what's a, you know, I didn't even know what a girl or a boy was when I was three. Who knew the difference? I mean, I certainly didn't know. I wasn't checking, you know. Uh, you know, and I, I think that, um, I think that it, it was a very strong relationship and a friendship that um, may have turned sexual. That's up to you to, to decide, you know. Uh, yeah, but I... We 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 never we never uh, we never really decided. However, if Ivanova is bisexual, then then I don't think that has any reflection on making her stronger or not. That's just simply a choice. It's it's your choice in in life to be bisexual or heterosexual or homosexual. Yeah, but what I think she's saying is that, that is it all strong women are gay? I mean, well, that's, that's the conception that uh, the perception that people believe. 
believe that I don't see are, Kate Mulgrew with any girlfriends. I mean, come on. Well, you know? no, but people believe that if a woman is 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 masculine, if a woman has masculine tendencies or qualities, if she's the if she's the boss, if she's if she uh, you know uh, that's obviously or apparently that she's either bisexual or homosexual. Well, most of them are. <laughs> <laughs> most, okay, whatever. most women that are strong, you know, hey, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I think, I, I think that that's just maybe something in, uh, maybe, maybe it's a homophobic quality in television, but I don't, I don't think that, that just because Ivanova is strong that you have to immediately label her as, listen, a lot of my girlfriends who are lesbians are lipstick dykes, and you wouldn't think of them as gay in, in a second. I mean, they're fully made up, poofed up hair. They're not the, but in TV, yes, maybe it's, a little bit more of the strong type that are labeled as homosexual. But listen, I think it's up to your perception to decide whether or not she is, because I, I certainly never did anything other than have somebody spend the night. So, you know, we could have had a sleepover. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It could have been a sleepover. <laughs> yeah, could have been. We played Parcheesi all night. <laughs> no, it's, I know, it's, listen, TV is very much behind the times, but I think that Joe, in tackling this and not making an issue out of it, you know, I don't think he's, he's labeled me as either. And I think it's wonderful that he didn't give me the boyfriend of the week, because like I said before, how did I do all this work and manage to get a string of ex-lovers? So it's nice that she's, you know, maintained her, whatever sex she is, who cares, you know? God, let everybody be what they want to be. You know? <clears throat> as long as you're over 18, I say do whatever you want, honey. <laughs> and I say as long as they have a driver's license, no problem. Exactly. <laughs> That's as long joke. as you're single, <laughs> I don't care what sex you are, I'm single. <laughs> okay, yes. The following question is for either of you. In earlier seasons, a number of episodes were written by people other than JMS. Is that still going to occur? Not as far as I know. No, I think Joe's going to write them all. Happily. <clears throat> One of the wenches had a question. The, the red-headed wench. Scream, yes. darling. Oh, all right. What's the toughest thing you had to do on the show physically and mentally? <laughs> mentally. What are you going to do? Work with Michael O'Hare. <laughs> <laughs> you guys expect this from me. Come on. You act surprised every time I say something like that. Now physically, I... Uh, <clears throat> my stunts, physically. Actually, the... the uh, the st stems? No, that wasn't that hard. To... All that sweating and shaking and all that? No problem. Just the, the, the physical stuff. But, and mentally, just the techno babble that Joe gives yeah. me. The, the seven, eight syllable words that don't exist. It's like, wow. Yeah, that's the hardest thing, the techno babble, definitely. It gets everybody. <laughs> We've had actors that had to use cue cards because they just couldn't get it. Yes. Um, the question. Oh, is there? Yeah. The question I had was, um, I have just come back to the series this year, and one of the the things that I'm having the most fun with is Marcus, and Ivanova, because it's nice a little gender reversal to see the guy completely and utterly, you know, moon-eyed and not being able to say anything, and Ivanova is sort of like, is she? Do you think she'll catch a clue, or do you think she? <laughs> <laughs> Or do you think uh, gender reversing? Is this another homophobic question? <laughs> no, I'm well, kidding. with Jason's hair that way, yeah, I don't know. But, but, you know, <laughs> actually, and he's the virgin in the group, so oh, um, <laughs> I think I, I, I hope so. I don't know if it's going to be unrequited love or not. Joe really won't give me a clue, and I think right now they're concentrating on the relationship between Bruce and Mira. Yeah, but I think it'd be amusing. Do you remember who and where your first uh, romantic kiss was? Um, I was five years old, and his name was Daniel Boone. I no, swear to God. I his really name was his Daniel name Boone? His name was Daniel Boone. He had a cowboy hat on, and he was the son of a guy who was working on our house, and he had blonde hair and big blue eyes. And I never forget, he, had this, he, he was standing in the, in the door of his father's truck, and, and I went over there, and he just sort of kissed me, and I went, hmm. And my brothers were going, ah, I can't believe it, and they're screaming, and I, I turned around and went, privacy! privacy a five-year-old girl privacy and then i kissed him again then my mother said claudia get in here you know, that was my first romance i was 18. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right i'm not talking about tongue or anything i'm talking about just a little innocent kiss Jeez. i was 18. <laughs> <laughs> you guys left i was 18 years old i didn't have a girlfriend in high school i uh my first girlfriend literally the first kiss i ever had was the freshman year in college Oh my God, I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> but I made up for it. I, <laughs> all of those wasted years. Oh, goodness. That's very sweet, Richard. That's very sweet. <laughs> Pathetic, but sweet. <laughs> now, I'm kidding. Yes, save me. Um, I have a friend who's a costumer and is wondering, how the heck are the new uniforms made? I mean, are they all zippers in those in yes. the braiding? And <laughs> what are they made out of? Zipper goes here, zipper goes here, and it's kind of yeah. a light wool gabardine. Yeah, it's not that comfortable. <laughs> no. Comfortable and you do need someone to take it, you put you in and out, Lisa. Lisa <laughs> does all of that for us. Actually, he doesn't need her to do it, he just likes her I to like do it. I like Lisa. <laughs> that, uh, it's like, you need help? Yes, Lisa. Actually, y y yeah, it's impossible to get all the things fastened up yourself, so we usually come out half undressed until they, until they do us up. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. Oh, she's looking at her watch. No, Christine. That's, that's, that's Is my... Is that a hint, Christine, honey? stand up. Christine. Christine, Christine. Christine helped me do everything. She spent the night with me last night. She was wonderful. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Lori, Lori was with me. Yeah, we, I took care of Lori. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Gladly. Anyway, <laughs> let's take the last question because I think oh, we're right here, going right over time, aren't Is that we? Where we're going. Oh, we have 10 minutes. Fabulous. Yes. Uh, yesterday, Claudia, you admitted that you enjoy playing with your PPC. Um, <laughs> Richard. P P G. P P G. P P G. Excuse me. P P G. <laughs> that other P P C is none of your business. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yes. Uh, Richard, you don't carry one on the show. Do you suffer from P P G envy? Yes, damn it. <laughs> no, actually, uh, there was a scene. <laughs> link, <laughs> link envy. <laughs> I, uh, where uh, it was late one Friday night, and it was during uh, where we were getting ready to go to war, and and Joe had taken me out of the med lab, hooked me up with uh, Jerry and Claudia and Bruce, and it was the four of us. And there was that one scene. It yeah. was late Friday night, and it was that slow mo or coming around the corner, the four of us, you know. Hero shot, hero uh, shot. And we're standing there, and they're and they're getting ready to to take the shot again. And it was just one of those moments where it's quiet, and Claudia's sitting next to me. I'm standing there, and Claudia has to look up. She says. What the hell's the doctor doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? No gun, nothing. I'm just walking with him. Hey. <laughs> well, I thought here we are like going into you know something dangerous and he's sitting there, no gun. Hi. Leg. I'm, I'm just, the doctor. I'll fight you with my scalpel. <laughs> you know, it was so stupid. <laughs> here we've got the commander, the captain, the head of security, and the doctor. <laughs> what, in case one of us gets hurt? I mean, it's like well, I but I have a lot of toys to play with. I have the special, uh, the prop guys, the really. Chingus and the frame. Yes, <laughs> all those things that they give me. And every time I'm in the med lab doing something, they bring three or four or five new toys. It's just exciting for me. Toys, toys. Speak up here. This is a question for Claudia. I read a lot also. Uh, do you have the same problem when you go to the bookstore and the, you pay for your purchase and the guy behind the counter goes, is this everything you needed today? And it's like, it's everything I could afford right, today. Exactly. I just went, I don't know if you guys know, there's a, there's a biggest bookstore in the United States called Powell's in Portland, Oregon. The thing is like an entire city block. It's an entire city block. I went up to visit my brother. He never saw me. I said, he dropped me off at 9 o'clock, picked me up at 5. I was there all day. I'm like walking out with, I, I brought an extra suitcase. I literally... <laughs> I, 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 cut, I got like 50 books. It weighed so much. It was so incredible. And yes, unfortunately, I would have bought more, but it was, um, but they're used, so they're less expensive. It's terrific. Ugh. Are they open right now? <laughs> Thanks for telling me. I, I swear, I, that's my one weakness. Well, that and swords, but that's about it. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, this is for Claudia. Yes. Okay, now the one scene where uh, you're speaking Mimbari, are you going to be pursuing that any further and trying to refine? <laughs> I, I hope not, man. That was embarrassing. Flock Shaw! That's what I was always saying, Billy, and I did this yesterday, but I think it's so funny because it always sounds like you're some sort of a surfer. Flock Shaw, man! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we're, I'm the white star. <laughs> it's like, Billy. yeah, we're always doing this ridiculous. Uh, poor Billy, you know, he'll he'll go through a whole scene and he's got like one line, you know, Paris the time, and that's it, you know. That's it. Yeah, 
Shaka! You know. Yeah, but Billy, you know, Billy always comes up with these these things that make you think. We were in a in a th uh, scene with like all of us were in that round table yeah. thing, and uh, the new script comes out. And so uh, they give us all the new, while we're sitting there and we're reading, and I'm like, I've only got one line in this script. And I start to bitch, blah, 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 blah. And he turns to me and says, you know, Joe could have written you out completely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, thank you, Billy, for uh, yeah. putting that in perspective. Yeah. It's true. He, he's definitely a very thoughtful person. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was wondering... If uh, you guys had the um, ability to write out Michael O'Hare in the story, how would you have done it? I, don't, I think the way that Joe did it was good, and I think that making him um, a deity was uh, certainly <laughs> a fine way to go out. I think, I think that Joe did a wonderful job. Um, <laughs> what? Now they made him... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Little problem back there. I, I think that they handled it the best way they could. I said, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> he works at Pizza Hut now. <laughs> no, Sinclair, I was saying. If to write him out, I was just joking. What else are you going to do? God, you guys are so sensitive. What is this? This, is the, this is the bloody Friends of Michael O'Hare Coalition over here or something? <laughs> God. You know, I have an announcement. I want to go to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. So anybody got an apartment or a house there? Please, raise you your hand. <laughs> I want to go. The Broncos are going to make it. We got to be there, okay? Just keep that in mind. Anybody else? Over here. I'd like to go to Paris if anyone has a little, <laughs> little pied-à-terre there that they could loan me for a while. <laughs> For many of us, the first thing we do when the episode is done airing is jump on the internet and try to figure out what's going to happen next. Since you don't get that much information ahead of time, do you do that among yourselves, try to figure out where a particular thing is going to go? And have you done that and been wrong? You're assuming that we read the scripts. Yeah, really? <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Lighten up. <laughs> Hello. It's a joke. <laughs> Jesus. No, I don't think we really, we really jump on the... Uh, I don't think that too many of us really jump on that net after the show. I don't... I don't try to guess because I'm always wrong. Right. It's just... We just wait for the next script, you know, and see what's up. I don't wait. I get them straight from Joe. Oh. <laughs> some of us wait and some of us don't have to. Just kidding. Casting couch my ass, honey, if that was that easy. <laughs> Everyone would be famous. My question is, who is the biggest practical joke instigator on the set? Yeah. Right there. You're looking at her right now. Next question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, a comment. You have such beautiful hair. I'm jealous. Thank you. I want to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's fake. Watch. <laughs> I would like to know about Brother Thea. Was he a Franciscan or Dominican? And sir, you told me you didn't... You've never been to an autopsy? I have, thank you. I would like to know, do you ever get interested in any of the terminology and you go out, get a Grey's Anatomy and look the stuff up? What? what? Okay, let me, let me translate. Thank you. Brother Theo was a Franciscan uh, uh, brother. Um, Richard, do you ever look up the medical... Uh, terminology? Shit stuff in uh, Grey's Anatomy. No, because half the time we're talking about stuff that doesn't even exist it's yet. It's made so. up. It's all made up, so I can't really go to any place. And see, that's the problem with memorizing, because I have no idea. You know, to memorize something, you have to have an idea or an image. If it, if, if, if it, it doesn't even exist yet, then you can't really memorize it, and you can't look it up. Oh, like there's a Belosian freighter in Doc H with a tacky and emissions with a hell? parade. Yeah, all right. You know. <laughs> sure, hey, we you can look that up. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing that I can really relate to Did in real life. Did that answer your question? You're welcome. Hi, I got a question. I want you to know that I made that up. I don't know if he's Franciscan or Dominican. <laughs> but I sounded very authoritative when I said it, wasn't I? Yeah. Oh, yes. Hi, this is for Claudia. Yes. Uh, in the movie, the gnome called Jerome. Over here. <laughs> you mean a gnome named Gnome? <laughs> How did you like kissing the gnome? Oh, that was so cute. Actually, Stan Winston is the guy who was, won all those Oscars and everything. He's a terrific special effects guy, and he made that little guy. And... Um, he smelled like latex, but he was a better kisser than Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> I have to say that. That's the truth. I had to kiss both of them, and I, I enjoyed kissing the gnome more than him. <laughs> Even though he smelled like rubber. 
Yeah, that was a fun movie. Okay, um, this is for Claudia. Um, in the program book, it says you do cartoon voices, yeah. and yesterday you did a voice that sounded familiar, but sounded I couldn't place it. Sounded just like your it. voice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> sounded just like you. No. <laughs> what? I'd just like to know what cartoon voices you've done. Oh God, I do everything from I do a little, I do a little Indian boy, and one of them I do, um, I do sort of a true child voice like that, and then I do kind of a Kathleen Turner, and then I do but it's he, this little ladybug called Boo Boo, like that, and then I do, I do like a, uh, so many voices. I, I do. I can't even remember them all, but I've done just about, you name it, everything. Yeah. You name it, I can do it. Well, just about, almost. Well, easy, easy. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Next. One more question, and that's it. Okay, Claudia, this, I know, understand you're writing children's books. Mm -hmm. Will they be under your name or some other name? They'll be under my name. I'm just looking for a publisher. Yeah. But they're really good. Anybody has any connections here? <laughs> okay, well, I think we're done. We just want to say thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. It's been so lovely. We're so glad we had this time, time together. together. Yay. Let's just sing a song and. <laughs>